This is part three in our series of lectures on section 2.3, and in this lecture we're going to talk about the De Morgan laws for indexed families. First, let's recall, once again, the working definitions of unions and intersections of indexed families. If we have an indexed family of sets A sub I, where I varies over some indexing set delta, then the union of all of the sets in the family is the set of all x in the universe such that there exists an i in the indexing set such that x is in a sub i and the intersection of all of the a's is the set of all x in our universe such that for every i in our indexing set x is in a sub i. Thus to say that a particular x in your universe is an element of this set is to say this there exists an i in the indexing set such that x is in a sub i. And to say that our element x is in the intersection of all of the sets is to say this, for every i in our indexing set, x is in a sub i. So now, if in addition to our index family of sets, we give ourselves a set b, which is a subset of u, then the following hold. It says that if you take the set theoretic difference of B with the union of all of the sets in the family, that's the same as intersecting over all of the sets in the family the set theoretic differences of B minus A sub I. And similarly, to take the set theoretic difference of B with the intersection over the entire family, it's the same as taking the set theoretic difference of B with a typical member of the family and taking the union over all of those sets. So you notice that there's a flipping in the, um, the union moves to an intersection, the intersection changes to a union. So we're, uh, in this video, we're only going to write the proof of the first one. The proof of the second one is similar, but I'll leave that one as an exercise for you to do yourself. The proof follows the usual pattern of proving equality of two sets. We're first of all going to prove that this one is a subset of this one, and then we're going to prove that this is a subset of this. So how would we get started? We would give ourselves an x in here, and then we'd say what that means. So what does it mean to say that x is in here? It means that x is in B, and x is not in the union. So what does it mean to say x is not in the union? That means the negation of this is true. Namely, for every i in the indexing set, x is not an element of a sub i. Well, if for every i, x is not in a sub i, um, since in addition x is in b, then that means that for every i, x is in b minus a sub i. And by definition, that's what it means to be in the intersection of all of the sets. Okay, so that's how you prove the first half, and the second half is a similar kind of a thing. So put your video on pause and see if you can write out the proof of part A, and when you come back, I'll show you the proof, uh, my proof of part A. Okay, so here's the entire proof of part A. Uh, we begin by, so the first step is to prove that um, this is a subset of this, and so I begin by, so let's look at the skeleton of it first. Uh, you'll notice I begin by taking an x in the left-hand side, and by this point here I'm able to show that it's also in the right-hand side, thus proving this inclusion. Then in the second half, um, I say I'm going to prove the opposite inclusion, so I take an x in the opposite side, um, and ultimately, I'm able to prove that it's in the right-hand side, and therefore I've got this inclusion, and therefore we get the desired result. Okay, so there you, you see, when, when the reader is looking at the overview of the proof before they go ahead and read the details, they want to know that that skeleton is in place. Okay, so now let's go back and look at the details. Suppose we have an x in here, then that means x is in B, but it's not in the union. Okay, so it's not the case that x is in the union. 
So you have to negate the statement that there exists an I in delta such that X is in A sub I. So that is, for all I in delta, X is not in A sub I. And so, since in addition x is in b, it follows that for all i in delta, x is in this difference. And since that's true for every single i in the indexing set, it follows that x is in the intersection of all of these sets. And so, we've got one half of it. Conversely, if you take an x in this left-hand side here, what does that mean? It means that for every i in the indexing set, x is in this set, x is in b minus a sub i. Well, in particular, that says that x is in b, um, and for every i, x is not in a sub i. Well, if for every i, x is not in a sub i, that means that it's not the case that it's in the union of all of the sets, because that's exactly in the negation of the statement that x is in the union. And so now we've got x is in b, we've got that it's not in here, and therefore it must be in the set theoretic difference. So that proves this inclusion, and from 1 and 2, you deduce the result that those two sets are in fact equal. So before I go on, remember what we've just proven. We've proven that this set here is equal to this set here. Okay, so now uh, I claim that that's a little bit more general than the thing that I'm going to refer to as De Morgan's Law, and we, we look at that on the next page. So these are De Morgan's Laws. It says that if you have a family, an indexed family of sets, and you take the union of all of them, and then you take the complement of the resulting union, that's the same thing as intersecting all of the complements. And also, if you take the intersection of the entire family of sets, and then you take the complement of that, that's the same as taking the union of all of the complements. And I claim that that's a corollary of the result we've just proved. Corollary means that it's something that follows fairly easily from the theorem that we've just proved. So what does it mean to take a complement of this set? Complement means you're taking everything in the universe that is not in that union. And that's the same thing as taking the entire universe minus the union. This complement here is the same thing as taking the set theoretic difference of the, the um, universal set U minus A sub I. <clears throat> and so, in fact, um, if we rewrite this complement as just simply U minus the union, and we rewrite this as U minus A sub I, you see that this is just simply the theorem that we've just finished proving, where we replace the general set B by U. And so that's really the proof. The proof follows immediately from the previous theorem by taking B to be the universal set U. Part A here is the special case of part A of the theorem in which we replace B by the universal set U, and part B is a special case of the theorem, part B of the theorem, um, again by replacing B by the universal set U. 